All right, the first thing we're going to start with is just talking about the ingredients for our meringue. There's so many opinions and different theories on meringue, and today I'm going to use something that's a new trick that I read about, and that is to put two teaspoons of cornstarch in your sugar. So I'm gonna be using a quarter cup of sugar, and I am going to add a couple of teaspoons of cornstarch to it. They say if you do this, the, the cornstarch will absorb any liquids that may be left over in your meringue. We're gonna see if it works. Now, I'm gonna stir this up, and it says stir it in your sugar. So I'm just taking my little teaspoon that I measured it with, and I am just going around and pressing it into the sugar. Make sure when you're using a meringue, or when you're making a meringue, that you try to get a finely ground sugar. That'll help you as well. And always remember, you don't put your sugar in there until the egg whites begin to froth up and get a little bubbly. So we're gonna be using vanilla, cream of tartar, half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of uh, sugar, and then that couple of teaspoons of cornstarch that's in there in a four egg meringue. So let's go ahead and separate our eggs. And then we're going to start mixing up our pudding. This is an old-fashioned pineapple cream pie with meringue and a regular pie crust. Our pie crust is in the oven pre-baking. And when you put your meringue on your pie, you want your pie to be hot so that the eggs closest to the filling will be warm and cook. Okay, so you're going to want to time it right. All right, we're gonna start separating four eggs. Now, you want to be sure and use room temperature eggs for your meringue. So if you're not good at separating them, you may want to separate them when they're cold and then let them sit out at room temperature for about an hour before you cook them or use them in your recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and start our meringue. The first thing you're gonna do is add your egg whites and wait till they get frothy. Then you're gonna start adding the sugar. in cornstarch. You need cream of tartar. You can use uh, cream of tartar or a little bit of lemon juice to help stabilize the meringue so that it doesn't fall flat on you after it's cooked. Now one thing you do not want to do is overbeat your egg whites. And so right now what we're gonna do is test and see what kind of peak it has. That is a soft peak. See how it curled all the way over? We're gonna, we're gonna beat these until that stands up. So that needs to point and stand up. And then at that point you stop beating. Now we're going to check and see what kind of peak we've got. That is a stiff peak. Now we're not going to beat it anymore because if you do, it'll overbeat. Ready to go on the pie. And it's we're timing it right because it's going to be, this is going to be out of the microwave in just a minute. We're going to take our beautiful meringue, it is at a stiff peak, and put it on this hot filling. The more the merrier. 
You're going to want to have your oven at 350 degrees. I like to use the small spatula. Go around the edge first and make sure that all of my edges have plenty of meringue on them. That's the first thing you want to cover up. And then you can make it pretty after you get that accomplished. Got plenty of time to make it pretty. The great thing about using the cream of tartar is it makes it a lot more um, workable to make it form those beautiful curls and swirls that you want uh, for your pie. All right. So once you get it around like that, then you can start decorating the top. And some people want to swirl it like that. But now I like to swirl it back and forth, kind of like a deep swirl. And when it browns, Mama always did hers like that, but I like to swirl it in circles. And they don't have to all go the same direction. And you can sit here and play in it all day. It's so much fun. It's just one of those things that's fun and fun and beautiful. Now, if you get your meringue out of your mixer and it's all lumpy and flumpy, that means you've overbeat it. And you can't make it real pretty like this if you overbeat it, all right? So we're gonna get this in the oven and we're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now I do put my rack down low just so that I can do the pretty um, videos, but normally you would want it in the middle of the oven. So we're ready to get this out. Let me hit the. Okay. Cancel on my oven. It's really pretty. Gorgeous pie. Nice and shiny, which is how you want your meringue to look. And you don't want to mess it up when you get it out, so be very careful. And then you're going to put it directly on a cooling rack. And do not put it in the refrigerator. Let it come to room temperature before you chill it. I hate to mess it up. It's so pretty. It really is. I'm going to slide it off of this because I don't want it to slide on me when I'm cutting it. And uh, let's just see what we can do. This meringue stood up very well and kept its shape and form really good. It did not weep or get sugar droplets on the top. If you want a good meringue recipe, this is going to be my new go-to meringue recipe, adding the two teaspoons of cornstarch. Y'all have a blessed day, and thanks for watching Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.